Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. We looked before in the series at how to randomly spawn things into an area, but in this case, we're gonna spawn onto a, a straight grid and then add a little bit of randomness. It's a little bit of a different technique and I think you'll find it interesting. Let's check it out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at adding some position randomization within the process of spawning a grid. So in another one of our videos, we saw the idea of scattering objects over a space. Now we're gonna have a more structured spawning process, but we're gonna add a little bit of randomization. If you wanna check out the detailed video on spawning a grid, you can see that on the channel. We're taking that and we're adding this little bit of randomness to it. So let's take a look at the result. So here you can see, right, we're spawning a grid. I've made a little bit more spacing offset so they're not right next to each other. And then I've added this position randomization field. And this is a vector two, which is gonna range between, in this case, negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. So it's adding one unity unit of total randomization only along the Y axis. Let's say we turn it up to maybe two we can see a more significant variation, right? Some of them are dropping beneath the ground. If we turn off the ground, we'll see that, right? Some of them dropping beneath the ground and that is creating what look like holes in the grid, which is also kind of interesting from a level design perspective, right? If we were maybe platforming over these boxes, that might be kind of cool. What we're doing here, if we go to our grid spawner object and look at our spawn grid with randomized position script, we're running basically the same script that we discussed in our how to spawn a grid video. But in this case, I've added this public vector three called position randomization. And then I've added this function here, which returns a vector three, right? If you're not familiar with using return values, it's basically a way to have a function do something and then give you back a piece of data. Here, I'm having it calculate and then give back the position. So what we're doing is we're inputting the position via an argument, right? In this case, the position. So we pass in the original unaltered position in the grid. Then we create a new vector three called randomized position. And we're using the random.range function and we're passing in the negative value of, in this case, position randomization dot X, and then the positive value. So we're ranging from negative, let's say for Y, right, which is the one we're modifying, we're ranging from negative 0 0.5 or, or one or two or whatever we put in to positive one or two, right? So that we're adding a total of, if we're doing 0.5, we're adding a total of one, right? So we could have up to 0.5 down or up to 0.5 up. So there's a kind of a one total range. We take that and then we add it to the input position, right? So we're doing it for the X, Y, and Z axes and then adding that to the original position. So we're getting a position in world space plus this amount of randomization and then we're returning the randomized position. Writing it as a function and returning it like this means that when we call our pick and spawn function, which is our pick a random item and instantiate it, we can just pass in the name of the function and then the spawn position as the argument. We're basically using that as the value that it's gonna give back, passing that through to pick and spawn, which will then pick a random item and instantiate it. In this case, we're not actually choosing between random items, we just have one. And so give us that little bit of additional randomization of our position within the grid, right? So this is kind of, I think what gives this a nice form is that it's a little bit regular. It's not totally chaotic, like if we just spawn over an area, but then we do get that nice, interesting variation based on the randomization. We could also try randomize, let's say we randomize the X by 0.5 and the Z by 0.5. Now we're gonna get something that looks less like a grid and there'll be some overlap. As you can see here, right? It looks like more like a noisy, a noisy grid, but you can kind of still detect the overall square shape that it started off as a grid and then became modified. So this is an interesting way 
to generate things, right? Is to generate a more regular form and then add some randomness to it. That's all we're going to cover in this video. Thank you so much for checking it out. If you found it valuable, please consider subscribing, drop a like. And if you have a comment, let me know, how would you use this in your games? Or is there some area of this that you'd like me to explore more in a future video? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be really interested to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much for watching.